G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and today we are taking some photographs of some rainbow bee eaters. They are gloriously beautiful birds. We are currently in Paradise Point on the Gold Coast and here's a bit of a look around for you. difficult to photograph for a couple of reasons. One, they're very skittish, they bounce around, they're very fast, they're very beautiful, which is why you actually want to photograph them, but then they also nest in the sand dunes. I'm not sure how fast these little critters fly, but I am sure, as I've been told by locals, there used to be hundreds in the area, but um, locals are really um, kind of upset at all this happening. Yeah, so that used to go back a couple of hundred meters, and there were kingfishers, and there were beautiful rainbow bee eaters, and a whole host of other things, big lizards and iguanas, big uh, osprey, and all that's kind of been gutted and ripped out of the area because of these houses. Now, the interesting thing is, today I am fully geared up with um, bug spray, uh, a rid to get rid of all the midges. <laughs> so the people that have spent literally millions and millions of dollars to live here have to live with the midges. That were the only element of nature that refused to be kicked out with all the development. I hate midges, but good on you guys for, um, for taking a stand. <laughs> so today's challenge is to take a photograph or several thousand of these beautiful honeybee eaters and what we're going for today is um, them eating the bees because they grab these bees which is why they're called bee eaters and they perch on these branches and they beat the death beat to death these um, bees and then gobble them down but then they also nest and they nest just in front of us just down here in these little banks here so that's the top of a bank a ridge of a bank and they, they nest just over the top and they flitter around as they come to um to to land there and so we have a um, we have a bit of a, a challenge it's also pretty warm it's pretty warm so um the sun's out, which means if we shoot with an increased ISO at high speed, we can get the goods. So let me uh, explain to you my camera settings for today's outing. Okay, so you'll note my shutter speed is 3,200th of a second, my aperture is 9, and my ISO is 1250. Now I want to overexpose slightly, which is why I'm mucking about with the ISO number and putting that up and down in order to catch the detail of the birds, because on such a bright day, my camera will naturally want to underexposed for the bird and so even with spot metering which meters the exposure of the bird even with that I'm still needing to shoot on a higher ISO and so I'm going to continue to bump up that ISO now I've got it on 3d tracking if I just show you by clicking on this button you'll see it's 3d tracking and constant auto focus uh, that allows the lens to do the job I'm shooting on the Nikon Z9 but it's also got the 150 to 600 Tamron lens on it the beast. Uh, now that sweet spot of its aperture is aperture 8 but if I shoot on aperture 9 or anything like 10, 11 and upwards of that it actually increases my chances of catching a bird in focus but what it also does is reduce the amount of light available which means you have to increase the ISO because you can't touch the shutter speed. So as always this is juggling act of how to best capture these birds and as the sun comes up my um, shutter speed is able to creep up and 3200 is really bang on for these sort of birds, they are so quick, so quick and here's some images I've been able to catch. shoot on a high ISO because I want to overexpose. 
The reason why I overexpose is because the background doesn't matter. What matters is the subject in the midground and everything else, like, pff, who cares? And so to overexpose means that you blow out the background but you really capture the detail of the feathers and the beauty of the bird when you shoot on those sort of um, conditions. And then I'm, um, I'm actually moving my camera around a fair bit, so I'm actually pretty mobile with it. I've been filming some stuff with it today, but, um, but I'm, I'm on, the, on the hunt like this and I usually put this up top so I've got the freedom to, to carry the barrel. But a good tip with a big lens like this is to hold it at the furthest point. Um, and for me, it'd probably be just here, so you're balancing it out. That means you can get more stability. Um, and the challenge is stability, but if you put your vibration reduction on, you shoot at a high shutter speed and your aperture isn't really, really narrow, you're guaranteed to get something in focus. Now, a bit of an example of how fast these little critters fly. Here's, I tried to film some in flight. Enjoy. I think anyone can take a photo of a bird but a bird when it's doing something that's unique to that bird and very dramatic and compelling then that's what everyone wants to see and so that usually means it in flight hovering eating scratching fluffing itself those sort of sort of things and so that's what I've been been going for with these sort of um, photographs and uh, to capture the detail with its detail on the wing or the detail on the feathers around the neck and the, and the head as you can tell I'm not a birder and so there may be uh, correct terms for this, and if so, and you'd like to uh, correct me, comments down below, <laughs> thank you very much. I think videos like this, where you can be out in nature, and if I didn't show you this behind, you'd think I'd be in the wilderness. There is beauty all around us. Like it's literally on your back doorstep, especially if you can afford one of these places. So it's always good to keep your eyes open and look around and look for habits and patterns and rituals of the animals that you can go out and then shoot. And that's what is happening here. You just watch them for a couple of hours and you see where they go and how they go and where they sit and how they fly. And then all of a sudden you can just whack your camera out and away you go. Now, if you spoke to someone in the know who was a professional bird photographer, they would say you need a gimbal. Um, as you can see, I've got a, a ball head. This is my favorite ball head from Leo Photo. Um, but what I do is I tighten it all the way up and then I back it off a smidge and watch what happens, right? So this is really good. See, it, it acts like a gimbal. And if I can, I just push tighten it off a little bit more. I can have all the flexibility and then I can just pause the camera and it holds. And so you use the braking mechanism to determine how much of a break you want on and also I keep my swivel um, not completely loosey-goosey but fairly um, fairly fluid so that I can move this way and that if uh, the lens is getting too heavy and it's getting too much uh, which happens after a couple of hours of shooting or if you want um, to take some video as well so if you want to interchange between video and photos all you do is set your video settings and they are independent of your photo settings and so you can just flick between photo and video which is what I've been doing today to get you some of the footage that I hope you've been enjoying one thing to watch though if you're using this as a gimbal is this top screw that holds whether it's your your plate or your um, stand your your lens uh, bracket on it can get loose and so the more you move it like this the looser this gets and sometimes you lift your camera and you find it's come up free in your hand so keep that make sure that's kept tight gosh it would be good to have an invention where you could just click it and it just holds and then you release but I'm yet to really be uh, satisfied by anything I've seen on the market. Photography like this shows the importance of learning the ability of your manual settings on your camera and if you're watching this you probably already are really familiar with your manual settings but what I would encourage is you to experiment 
and so you can take blurred photos uh, that are intentionally blurred you lower your shutter speed but you get a certain part of the bird in focus as it's moving that can be really really creative or you can change your ISO around to allow more light and actually do a low key or a high key uh, photograph based on your ISO or you can change your aperture which means you can affect the blurriness of the background or how much of your subject is in or out of focus and I just encourage you to experiment don't feel locked in don't go away with a screenshot of what these settings are and go I need to apply this to all bird photography no no it's it's a good starting point um, but you can actually shoot lower than 3200 shutter speed um, and get a really good result and so be creative and you can even do some panning shots these birds are probably a little bit too fast to do panning shots with but a bigger bird like uh, an eagle or a pelican or even a, a seagull that's cruising around they seem to be less aggressive and less skitterish would be a really good subject to attract, try some panning shots on with panning you just lower your shutter speed completely to say 1 15th of a second and you keep focused on and moving with your subject as you press the shutter and everything else should have this cool blurry background except for that which you take the photo of. Well gang I hope you've enjoyed the uh, outing adventure and tutorial today I hope you've got something out of it if you did put in the comments below what you did get out of it I'd love to uh, to hear um, and especially if you like more of these videos of getting out and about if you've got any questions from today's video put in the comments below uh, please subscribe love a subscription and say good day it's uh, meant to be social media right social let's chat and hang out uh, well, hang out might not be possible if you're on the other side of the world, but if you're close by, we should do something. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>